Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. So in this lesson, we are going to focus on a lot of things in the world of chord playing, very specifically in terms of triads and developing our study of inversions. And while developing the exercise, I thought, okay, whenever we practice chord inversions, even in some of my lessons, we tend to practice chord inversions with major chords and minor chords, major triads, minor triads, like going from G major to C major, you know, G major to C minor. So usually when we shift between chords, they tend to have a note in common. For example, going from the 1 to the 4 or the 1 to the 5. So we identify the common note, retain the position or positions of the common note or notes and then form the most efficient path. So I thought let's go against that narrative in this lesson by choosing two chords which have nothing in common, which have no notes in common but still figure out a way to practice inversions with a very wholesome approach to try and do all of them, the root position, the first inversion as well as the second inversion. And the other thing which I mentioned earlier which we forget to do in our chord practice would be to also incorporate the diminished triad or some other triads apart from just the major and the minor. So in this lesson we'll also do the some of the diminished chords as you heard in the lesson. Okay, and we are also going to try this out in very real world scenarios. So we are going to take a variety of scales, harmonize those scales and then look at what our go-to chords will be. And to cap off the lesson, we are going to try and see how interesting we can make it in terms of rhythm and melody. Because if you think about it, every inversion of a chord breathes out a melody line at the top end. So if I take a G minor like this, for instance, there's a D on the top or there's a G on the top or there's a B flat on the top. So the top note generally resonates well with our brain and we tend to sing the top note. If ever we have to sing one note, the most obvious one which comes to our ears is the upper note or the upper voice of each chord. So this lesson will hopefully help you train your ear, hopefully help you shift between chords a lot better, hopefully understand music theory and chord theory a lot better, scale theory and at the back end of it all we are going to practice inversions as best as we possibly can. So do stay tuned till the very end because there will be a lot of variations, a lot of scales which are covered and also a lot of rhythm patterns which we'll also start exploring organically as the lesson flows. Okay, before we get started, it'll be nice if you can consider downloading my handwritten notes which are available on the Patreon page and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. So I'm going to take the key of G for our end entire lesson. So we'll start off with a G major scale. You can always for homework or for self-study, you can do this on other keys as well. So I'm going to walk you through all of this stuff on the key of G. Let's start with G major. Good old G major. Okay, that's an F sharp in there. Now the exercise, the way it works is you, what are the two chords which have nothing in common with each other and assume the first chord is the tonic chord or the home chord or the root chord or the one degree of the scale. So that's G and in the G major scale the tonic chord will form a major chord or a major degree. It won't form a minor chord because there's no B flat, neither will it form a diminished chord. So it's a G major in there as a tonic. Now which are the two chords out there in the major scale which do not have any note in common with this tonic chord. Now if you do the 3 or the median, it has two notes in common, right? B minor has both B and D in common. You take the 4 chord, C major, it has G in common. So then you can invert it like this. If you take the 5 chord, that's D major, that has D in common. And if you take the relative minor or the 6 minor, G major to E minor. And they have two notes in common again. So the median and the submedian or the 3, the 3rd degree and the 6th degree will have two notes in common with the tonic chord. While the 4th and the 5th degree will have one note in common. That's the C major and the D major. However, the 2nd degree and the 7th degree, that would be the A minor and the F sharp diminished, 
are one step either chromatically or you know either a whole step or a tone as we call it or a half step or a semi tone as we call it these chords are just one after the root one after the tonic and if you build them in that triad building tri tri and if you build them in that triadic approach in the in the sense you do g b d if you write them in a circle skip one play one so g b d and then progress towards a you'll find it as a c e so they have nothing in common because they are just a step apart you know so g a minor so the 1 degree and the 2 degree which is also represented as the small 2 because it's a minor it minor chord in the major scale and then the 1 degree and the 7 degree which is uh, written as small 7 degree the in uh, to make it diminished okay the degree sign like a temperature degree uh, or the degree you use in a geometry class is used to denote a diminished chord okay so the major would be represented by roman 1 the 2 minor would be represented by small roman 2 and then the 7 diminished would be re represented by small 7 degree so what are the two chords again which do not have a note in common with the root or with the tonic it would be the 2 and the 7 okay one step up one scale step up and then one scale step down this will hold good for pretty much all the scales out there the mixolydian the minors the harmonic minor the dorian modes like phrygian so we'll journey forward so let's begin with the let's set a foundation with the major scale so your exercise will basically be to pick the tonic chord alongside either the 2 degree or the 7th degree okay that will be the g paired with an a minor or the g paired with a f sharp diminished and we play these chords pretty much like a scale movement ascending arohan and descending avarohan but instead of making it very scalar i'm going to continue the motion of going up and down but do it in a very chordal way using the pair either the one paired with the two or the one tonic paired with the seven diminished first let me do one paired with two so that's g major a minor now here's what you do i want to continue the climb which is the very next note which starts off or which continues off from the g major chord so g major a minor g major again a minor again but starting from the c G major again but starting on the D A minor again but starting on the E and then you end with where you started which is the which is the root position of G major again G major A minor G major A minor G major A minor G major so it provides for a very melodic motion a descending but what's actually happening is i'm only harmonizing and if you want to call this melodic whatever it is i'm playing is just using two chords this g major and a minor and the power of the inversions or the way i'm voicing the chord or the way i'm angling the notes of the chord if you will are what's causing it to move it's it's what's causing the harmony to be very dynamic and a uh, melodic in nature it's weird to say that the harmony is melodic in nature but that's in essence what's happening because i'm floating around the chords so g major i'll call out the inversion so when you play g major like this it's called root position you play it like this it's called first inversion you play it like this it's called second inversion if you want to study the basics of inversions we'll leave you a few links in the description also do consider checking out our members only courses where all these concepts are explained in great detail from ground zero so g major root position this is called the first inversion with the root on the top and this is the second inversion with the root in the bottom repeating root g b d first b d g second d g b 
Okay, same story with your A minor. A minor root position. First inversion, second inversion, starting on the E. So I'm just moving forward, finding my next, my consecutive, the next note, and then re-inverting my chord so that that note starts off the next chord. So G, A, B, C, D, E. There's no F for F sharp, so we leave that alone and skip to G. G E D C B A G and I call out the chords G major A minor G major A minor G major A minor G major or G in the root A in the root G in the first A in the first G in the second A in the second and G back to the root root Okay, so that's one paired with the two minor, and what about one paired with the seven diminished? We don't need to go down because the exercise is still scalar. So instead of playing the seven diminished traditionally, like F sharp A C, which is F sharp diminished, I'll angle it from here. So G major. F sharp diminished like this because I want to continue the climb. G major, F sharp diminished starting on A. G major starting on B, and then F sharp diminished starting on C, and then G major starting on D, and then and then I skip. I don't need my six in there because it's not contained in any of these two chords. I do normal F sharp diminished with an F sharp in the bass. And then G, so G F sharp, G F sharp, G F sharp, G. So this is a very dominant to tonic kind of resolution. The dominant tends to always want to resolve to the tonic. There we go. It's almost like a seventh chord, like a five going to one. But even the diminished, in fact, the five chord has a flat seven in there. So that this component is the diminished part of the dominant seventh chord. So uh, what we're doing now is a very dominant to tonic. And then the other option we had was G major, A minor. This is more of a gospel movement. Especially when you do the two minor. The whole idea is to also build up some melody lines like this, you know, uh, for example. You can harmonize with either of the pairs, tonic with the dominant or the seven diminished or tonic with the two minor. Okay? And you can always jumble it up to boost the creativity and to actually compose. For now, I'm presenting it as a drill, as an exercise. So now let's continue forward. We've looked at the basic major scale. So let's now look at the minor scale. Let's start off with the first minor, the natural minor, which has a flat 3, flat 6 and a flat 7. That's B flat, E flat, F and you can follow my handwritten notes where I've written down a chart to kind of show you what what is the two chord and what is the seven chord which can be built from any of these scales. So now if you take G natural minor, your tonic will be G minor triad. And what will be your two? Your two will not be 
minor anymore it will be diminished and your 7 will not be F sharp because your 7 is a 7 flat to begin with right so what will be that chord it will be 7 flat major so the 7th degree of the natural minor will form a major chord so so that's tonic minor 2 diminished 2 diminished tonic minor and then your 7 flat major 2 diminished 7 flat major so again if we journey forward Do that again. G minor, A diminished. G minor, A diminished. G minor, A diminished. G minor, descending. G minor, A, dim, e, a diminished. G minor, A diminished. G minor, A diminished. And G. And let's now do that with the 7 flat major. So G minor, F major, which is the 7 flat major. G minor, F major. G minor with a D bass. F major, G minor. And I'm trying to sing the bass notes as well so you get the idea. G minor, F major. G minor, F major. G minor, F major. G minor. You can also sing the top notes. G Then with the diminished D flat G A B flat C D E A oh repeat with the seven flat major coming up now. Rip down. Okay. Uh, what about the harmonic minor? Another very popular minor uh, scale out there. You'll have the tonic minor in the harmonic minor scale. You'll have your two diminished as well as your seven diminished. Just like the major scale had the seven diminished, which is F sharp diminished. You'll have your two diminished, in this case A diminished and F sharp diminished, which kind of is an A diminished seventh or an F sharp diminished seventh in the first place. They are like part of the same diminished seventh chord family. So let's run with that. G minor, A diminished, G minor, A. You've already done this for natural minor. You can kind of arpeggiate the right hand as well, uh, or start with blocks. Then try arpeggiating the right hand or one of the hands. If you don't like the semi quaver arpeggios, you can then do triplets. Maybe like this. Tuck it, tuck it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Testing your shifting a bit more. Let's now do the 7 diminished, which we haven't yet done. F sharp diminished. F sharp diminished. Just make, make a conscious effort to get your diminished chords correctly because especially when you invert the, the diminished chords, in this case if I invert F sharp diminished, you see what's happening here. There's a smaller minor third interval between A and C and a wider one between C and F sharp which is the tritone interval. Okay, so you have to watch out with respect to your fingering. Minor, diminished, minor, diminished, minor, diminished, minor. Descending, minor, diminished, minor, diminished, minor, diminished, minor. And then the two diminished. This we already did before. Okay, so we've done major, natural minor, harmonic minor. Let's do a couple more before we wind up with our lesson. We'll do maybe the mixolydian scale, which is the major scale, 
with a flat 7 now we are already ready with it because we've done in the mixolydian the 2 will be minor so you can run with that and the 7 will be a flat 7 flat major will form will be formed in the mixolydian scale or mode as we call it it's just paired now with the major tonic okay another scale i like to use which has a major bass will be the mixolydian flat 6 scale so the the thing about this is your one chord will be major but your two chord will be diminished because of the six flat in there so let's roll with that again try to sing the top notes at least and then of course the mixo flat 6 the 7 flat will continue to remain major and yeah those are some major scales then even in the minor you can probably journey forward with the dorian scale the dorian will be interesting you take your tonic minor and your two minor also so two minors Seven would be a major, or just like the mixolydian and the natural minor. So Dorian, it's pretty much all permutations of what we've already discussed for major, natural, and harmonic minor. I leave you with one more. This is going to be a bit different. The Phrygian scale. The Phrygian scale has a two which is flat. So you'll have to deal with the flat two, which is A flat there. So what does that form? That forms a major two flat, two flat major. So G minor, A flat major, G minor, A flat major, G minor, and the seven flat will be a minor. It will, it won't be a major. So it's seven flat minor. Maybe you can just roll with the one, two, one, seven, one. Two flat, one seven flat, one two flat, one seven flat, and now let's roll with it up, up and down. G minor, A flat major, G minor, A flat major, G minor, A flat major, G minor, two. Ru, 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 Repeat. then coming to the um, seven flat minor in the phrygian so two flat major and then you have your minor but a seven flat minor okay so this exercise kind of gets you to if not anything master at least the tonic chord in tonic major or tonic minor okay but then you have all the other permutations alongside the tonic we've talked about the two minor we've talked about the two flat major well you could also do the two major you can make it very lydian the lydian mode is also there which has a two major chord in there okay and we've also done well the two diminished two minor Two major, which will make it Lydian. Two flat major, which will make it Phrygian. Uh, then we went down and we got the seven diminished. Then the seven flat major, 
and then the seven flat even the seven flat minor was there so if you want to push yourself a bit more rhythmically speaking to get you to kind of force yourself to shift between the chords better you could probably shift in a thresio manner which would be a three meets three meets two or basically permutations around the three grouping the three grouping and another two grouping so you could do three three two you could do three two three or else you can do two three three so i'm going to go back to my major scale uh, one major and two minor so one two three one two three one two one two three one two three one two one one two three one two one two three one two so one two three one two one two three one two three one two one so that was a one two three one two one two three one two three one two one two tuck it tuck tuck it tuck it tuck tuck it ta so you can do it with conical words like tuck it for three and tuck for two tuck it tuck it tuck 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 it ta now you can do this maybe for um Three meets two meets three. I'm going to do a two diminish to make it that mixo flat six kind of uh, sound. You can kind of combine these and even maybe do a bigger grouping, like maybe takita 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 taka taka takita, which becomes a, a summer of sixty-nine grouping, so to speak. That will be takita 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 taka taka takita 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 taka taka the 333322 grouping which is used by Brian Adams in Summer of 69 let me show you that again with a harmonic minor to give you a different flavor and my left hand's act playing the accent hits and the right hand's giving me that grouping with a simple arpeggio 1 2 3 1 2 3 1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,4,1,2,1,2,1,2,1,2 Kind of a combo between broken, uh, I mean dyads and the broken chord. Breaking up the chord basically into two pieces. Again, repeating. 1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,3,1,2,
and their respective triads and in this lesson we've kind of promoted the use of the diminished chord as well which is a very useful triad and also while doing this exercise you're going to end up doing every single inversion of pretty much every single chord and even with G that could occupy you for a, a few weeks also you know and just by doing G you're not just well you are biased towards the G major and the G minor chord no doubt but then you're getting more comfortable with also the other chords and I told you at the beginning of the lesson wherein we are not keeping common notes usually when we practice chords we are going to have things in common like the one six four five one common chord progressions tend to have notes in common so uh, this exercise deliberately doesn't have anything in common so it'll push you a bit more to master your chords and how to move and shift smoothly between your chords hope you found the lesson useful and don't forget to get my handwritten notes on patreon and if you want to study things from ground zero you can always go to nathanielschool.com or else figure out something that can be customized for you by writing to our course advisor i will catch you soon cheers